Hey friends, it's time for another HVAC video. We're gonna work on the thermostat today. We're gonna to relocate it from the side of the aquarium. Yeah, I'll get to that one day too. To the wall and the seven strand wiring that uh, was a major ordeal to get here. Uh, and there's some five strand in there too, but yeah, this better be that damn seven strand. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, remember to like subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you find out when I release new videos. And let me know what you think in the comments, good, bad, or ugly. Of course, if it's too stupid, it'll get deleted. So, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, share your comments, share your advice. Uh, let me know if this helps you out. Let's get to it. We're gonna go up in the attic and free up the mount that goes here. Let's get it. So, that's the mount and it won't be very difficult to get out of here so let's let me uh set the camera up here and while i grab the drill and set it up for it let me explain this madness so the reality is it was never supposed to be here in the first place it was here because uh the good for nothing man unit fried a uh the network side of the communicating board because honeywell was too cheap or emerson i don't remember which who made that board anyway they were too cheap to harden the uh board so nearby lightning induced a current and it fried it this is actually pretty damn bad ass uh, oh man. Why do I have so many wires in here? Oh, I see what's going on. So it's just really impressive to me that this is tool free and all the manufacturers should do this because they just should. But this will never get used again. So I don't have to be nice to it to get the, I mean, I don't have to be nice to the wires. The mount will be used. And I still don't understand why there's two wires in here, but whatever. So let's go downstairs. I mean, this is all going to scrap. This is all from the old system and is it has been decommissioned. Um, the new system is here. Once we get it hooked up, we'll worry about it. So let's go downstairs and work on that. So I need to strip this. Uh, you know what, I'm not gonna use the razor. It got me yesterday. Let me get a pair of wire cutters and I'll do this right. So, we're gonna undo two, three inches of this. And uh, we just screwed that up. There we go. So let me uh, check the wiring diagram on this. It's been a while since I've done it. I probably should have taken a picture before I took it apart, but I didn't, so. Um, and it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna redo all of it anyway. So let me go ahead and make some plans here before we get busy. Okay, so, you know, that wasn't exactly the simplest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, and we're gonna attach this here, which is not perfect but it's going to get us through what we need I, I just need it on the wall at this point um i'll pretty this up at some other point in the next several years like i said i just need this attached to the wall so the big challenge i had is the aciq documentation 
I'm not gonna lie, it sucks, okay? It was written in Chinese and translated to English. Um, and their support's not much better. I called once, the guy called me back, left me a voicemail, I called him back and never heard from him again. So, you know, they did call back, but I wasn't real thrilled about that. So, um, and then Honeywell has tried to dumb down their documentation to make it easy for, you know, Susie homeowner to install one of these thermostats. And the process of doing that, they've really hidden the technical information you need to do it right. Which is, what do they think these terminals do? Because I need to take what they think the terminals do and what Medea says the terminals do and map them. Because I'm starting from scratch. So, uh, the good news is it's not too terribly difficult. Um, so green is our fan wire. Yellow is our call for air conditioning. Um, 24 volt thermostat control is archaic. And it really started out with uh, common and uh, a wire to run the fan and a wire to run the heater. And that was it. Really, it was just those two things. And honestly, if you, all you're doing is heating, you don't even need that. You just call for heat and it'll turn the fan on and run it when it needs to. I don't know why this isn't going in. There it goes. So we got that. We're gonna keep white as our heating wire. That's traditionally been the color that's used. So we're gonna stay in the traditions here. The funny thing is it looks like I might have been able to use the five wires that were here, but Whatever, this thermostat officially only supports one zone, and that's a good thing because, uh, yeah, it's just a good thing. So, now we get into our other colors. So we got cool heat. We need a emergency heat, which is gonna go to E. Uh, I wanna look and see red is traditionally goes to R, so we'll leave that alone. So when you're doing this, you don't want to bend these too many times because they're not going to bend back that many times. So let me see what orange, blue, and brown are supposed to do traditionally, and I'll be back. So orange and blue are traditionally used for um, reversing valves, and brown doesn't have a traditional color code. So what I'm going to do, because it'll make sense to me, is use orange for my, my common. All right, and then I'm gonna sit here and think about it for a second. Let's see where common actually is at. C, 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 C. Oh, it's over here, all right. There we go, so that's, that's common. And then we've gotta connect E uh, so I'm gonna look yellow, ground pollen. Yes, yeah, so we've got everything we need at this point except emergency heat. We're gonna put that on brown for burning money because if we ever turn the electric heat on, things are desperate. All right, so we'll connect the All right, and then we're just gonna fold blue back up in here and leave it alone, because we don't actually need it. So we've got, and then I'm gonna take a picture. Let me get my phone. All 
All right, that'll save me the hassle. Uh, so at this point, that goes back on there, and where did I set this thermostat? Okay. So I th set the thermostat in the other room because the um, I needed the number off the back of it, and it was instead of just calling this a T9 thermostat, it's it's got like 15 different uh, numbers on the back of it. What the hell? They can't just call it a T9 thermostat. Anyway, let me go make sure the power's off. I'm pretty sure it is, but because I'm fixing to work inside that box, I want to make sure the power is absolutely off. I'll be right back. All right, power's off. So now let's uh, open this thing up and see what is inside here. Uh, put my phone somewhere where it's a little safer. Oh, you're gonna be kidding me. So whatever size those are, they are not quarter and they are not 5 sixteenths. So that probably makes them some weird metric size. All right, now let's see what getting in here looks like. Wow, that was surprisingly easy. There are a lot of American pieces of equipment that aren't that easy to get into. Now, what did they have on the back side of here? Oh, it has some kind of sealant. It's almost airtight. Oh, and there's even a wiring diagram. This will be more current, so let me take a second to study this and I'll be right back. So let's have a look around. So here is our control board and uh, more control board. Mm, bunch of switches. I'm not 100%. I can't read any of that crap from here. So that's your thermostat wiring. Uh, and that's probably outdoor control. And then indoor, inside here, we have a nice, really clean unit. No wasted energy there. Uh, this could be up a little better, but it's probably okay. Uh, nice electronically controlled fan. Uh, looks a lot like a Goodman unit, but without all the cost. And then our discharge side. So the heater needs to go in here. Um, and that's probably going to happen sooner than later. Uh, so let me get that. I might do that right this second. So the directions are a little spartan. That's putting it nicely. But I'm going to go ahead and install the heat kit and get that out of the way. Okay, so I guess that was our lead in for power. We might be back to that. And then here's our output for heat. And it's kind of interesting, they have little brackets on the other side that it fits into. And then, oh, included four screws there, but didn't come with them. All right, so uh, let me see if I can find that screw. All right, I did find it. It had jumped into the carpet. to start over because it, it jumped out of its little spot. So I think this would be a good time to put on a headlamp. There we 
we go. That one's in. Let me see. All right, so now we can try to put these screws back in. One is gonna be straightforward. The other is gonna be a pain in the ass. Uh, scratch that. I need to go get a screwdriver because I can't get a power tool in there. All right. Let's see if these play nice together. They do not. So we gotta use the small one and reach in here. And let's put the headlight back in. All right, so I'm gonna have to get down on my hands and knees and fight with this thing up close and personal. So first thing I'm gonna do is loosen this just a little bit to get some wiggle room in here. You know, the, the root problem here is this is basically a box made out of razor blades. There we go. So. Okay, so this goes back here. Let me see what that text is. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to plug in the heat control, that's there. And now we need to figure out where we're gonna bring power in. Uh, you know, the most logical place would actually be up here or here, and we've already got we already got, we're, we're gonna have to run a hole here anyway. So the problem is we've got a half inch, a one inch and one a quarter inch. What the hell were they thinking? I'm pretty sure this is half inch, but let me look at it real quick. Yeah, this is half inch. So I'm gonna bring this in on the side because it's already there. The problem is, yeah, it'll, it'll reach. Just barely. And then I'm gonna have to jump her across to um, the unit, which is annoying, but tolerable. So um, I'm gonna do this just quick and dirty style. All right, let me go get a hammer and a screwdriver. Ain't nothing gonna be easy about this. Okay, so we're going to start with beating this up. Wow, what a pain in the ass. Normally not that hard. I'm really surprised. So, and then I've got just a little punch in here that'll do the trick. There are no nice ways to put those in. That is the nice way. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the side. And 
we're going to reach in here with a pair of pliers and pull that out. All right, now I want to shorten this. This really only needs to be about that long. So I'm going to put a mark on there. I need to go get a pair of, of uh, tubing cutters for this, so I'll be right back. Uh, beforehand, I'm going to go ahead and just prep this. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm going to not cut all the way through this and just kind of rotate it. And that allows me to pop the conduit without damaging the wire. Now we're going to slide this back in. And slide that all the way up. And then we'll tighten this down, which will lock it. There we go. We got a nice, nice good connection there. Uh, undo this, and then we're going to attach it on the inside. So we'll thread this, push this out of the way for the moment because we really don't need anything from it. Let's get this fastened down. All right, and I need to set this. You guys can't see this, and quite frankly, I can't see it either, so I'm gonna put my headset on. Uh, let me take the camera down and show you what I'm working on. So we've got this in here, and we need to set that, that lock nut, and the way that you do that is with a flat-headed screwdriver, or a slot screwdriver, and a hammer. And that'll get it nice and tight. All right, so next let's go ahead and ground this. And again, I have checked that the power is off. So we want two things. Uh, we might actually be able to get double money out of this. You gotta be kidding me. There we go. That's not gonna work. So I'm gonna bring that down here and cut it. This is too big, so let me go get a small one. Okay, so we're finally back here with a screwdriver that fits, and we're going to get it on. So we're going to put this in here. These are nice anodized connections. It's kind of interesting. I want to make sure I get good metal to metal contact. Get cinched down nice and tight. I sigh because I just don't like the way some of this looks. So I'm going to bring these to here.
What brand of breaker do we have in here? It's a Siemens. All right, next question is, what's it rated for? Oh, no, it's an HF. I have no idea what the hell it is. So, American breakers are rated for the number of conductors that can be underneath them. Um, Titan torque, 16.2, copper wire only, um, not listed for more than one wire. So, yeah, whatever. It's going to get more than one wire. So, um, it doesn't say how many wires it can have or not have. And normally what you see in this is that this acts as a main disconnect. And so normally what you'd have is wires coming out of here, going up over to here, and yellow is green in the rest of the world. You know, in the US we do stupid shit. So that's how I'm gonna wire it. And I'm gonna continue to call red L2 in my house. Uh, the other thing that could have been done is to run straight out of these lugs onto the right side. Now, these lugs are crush, or what I call crush lugs. So I don't, I don't feel like jumpering off these is that big of a deal. Um, but you know, if you really want to follow code, the the overcurrent protection device has to be listed and labeled for multiple conductors in order to put multiple conductors under there. And sometimes it's right here, sometimes it's here, sometimes it's here. On this case, there is some text here that tells you what wires you can use. But again, I don't, I don't think it says anything about quantity. And I'm going to look again. Tightening torque, 45 pound, foot pound inches or pound feet inches. Copper wire only number 16 through number two. American wire gauge. Uh, wire temperature rating of 60 degrees Celsius or 77 or 75 Celsius. So THHN or Romex. Uh, it's a TB1 BLD HACR, so it's an air conditioning heating. It is a 60 amp breaker, which is way bigger than anything that needs to be here, so it will never provide overcurrent protection. Yeah, and how'd they do it? Yeah, that's what they did down there. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's gonna get done the way I said it's gonna get done. And that just is what it is. And then I'm only gonna have to lay down to do this because I can't see up under there. When I was younger, it wouldn't have been a big deal, but these glasses really make life rougher than it needs to be. And I just want to get these cranked down nice and tight. One thing I don't like is the color code shift. You know what? I could probably do this a little differently over here. Um, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's only pulling five amps. Where the hell did that red wire go? Underneath me. So uh, the air handler itself only pulls like five amps. So, you know, five amps at 240 volts is, you know, not squat. Yeah, I am gonna do it this way. So there's a little tab in here to mash down against the uh, the wire end that this is equipped with. And it's just amazing to me the way they do some of this stuff. I don't like loose wires in my... Uh, 
terminals. So I'll fix that. So I feel good about this. Uh, you know, they must be using 90C wire, but it's, you know, it's only a 5KW heat strip. And quite honestly, it'll probably never run. The um, Goodman one never ran. I'm really surprised they'd over, over breaker this thing. So now let's figure out where these are gonna run. Is this enough to go back behind here? No, it's not. So, yeah, whatever. It'll just stay out here then. And this is, uh, you know, again, this just, I'm just shocked. These are little tiny ass terminals for mains voltage. And these look like low voltage terminals to me. Yeah, I'm sure they can handle high voltage, but they just don't look like they've got enough oomph. And absent additional overcurrent protection, everything has to be rated for 30 amps. That's that's the way it's that's the way it works. So we're going to keep this up out of the way, drop this back in there, and then these are turn these are Phillips. So we'll come back in here with this. Actually, the hell with that. We'll use this. We can get in here. And again, this is not my, uh, I'm not real happy with the wire routing here. But I also don't want it to cross under this. So I'm just gonna make the best of it and it's gonna go up in here like this. And we need to make a ground connection. And um, this is something that really could be done differently. There, This should be a single point power and um, it, it just should be single point. That, that's all I got to say there. So we're going to come in here and we're going to lug down to this terminal where I know we're getting a good bond. And I, and I kind of question if these conductors are really rated for 30 amps, which is what the ampacity is. And um, I'm really shocked that they are using a 60 amp uh, breaker in here because it's not going to do anything. I mean, if they were using a 20 amp breaker in here, I'd be like, okay, they've chopped it down some. But yeah, they're not even doing that. Okay, so we'll tuck that back there, tuck this in here. And we're basically good with the power wiring. Now we have some sealing to do here, here, and here to keep air from sneaking in. But right now that's the least of my problems. So my next, My next project is to bring in my communications wire and wire that down and then bring in my uh, my thermostat wire. So let's start on the communications wire. We clearly don't need that much of it, so we're gonna cut it there. That leaves us plenty to work with. Thank you for your service. By the way, if you're a veteran, yep, that's how the government treats us. Uh, they just toss us off in the corner. Gotta be really gentle with this. This might actually work better.
And I'm going to go back to sitting because it's, it's hurting my knees. Kids getting old sucks. I'll be back down there in a minute. Now, one other thing before I forget about this. They included a sticker that... It's a multi-part sticker. Oh, I would have thought they'd broken these apart. So apparently this whole sticker goes in there. Yeah. And a little pride of workmanship here. Indicate what the hell's actually installed. My, my other gripe is this is entirely too small to read. Even with my better, stronger glasses on, this is difficult to read. What the hell? I mean, is it really that expensive to print different stickers for different products? I mean, it isn't like the heat kit was free. All right. So where were we? So we want to peel back. The aluminum wrap is technically the shielding, but we're not going to mess with the... I'm not even going to try to get that into... Um, it, no. No, no, and hell no. So, one, two, and a ground wire. So, we'll ground the ground wire. That'll bond the indoor and outdoor units. Okay, as promised, we're headed back down here. <clears throat> you know, sometimes as an inspector, I see units that are in a closet where you can stand in front of them. And I envy those units in moments like this where I can't stand in front of it and have to crawl around. Uh-huh, I have no flipping clue. No, this can be a pain in the ass. All right. I gotta look at the wiring diagram. Connector number three. That can't be it. There it is. Connector number 20. S1, S2, and ground. Right. Well, where is connector number 20? Ah, so it's up in here. Where the hell's ground? What the fuck? <clears throat> so there's no ground terminal anywhere near where this thing lands. Oh yes, there is. It's right there. Right where it's almost freaking impossible to reach. Uh, I gotta get a little tiny screwdriver anyway because what I need to work on is right there. So that'll keep that a little bit out of my way. Okay, so where did that screwdriver that I brought up here go? There it is. This is a fail. I mean, this is this is bad access. This is not well thought out.
And the heat kit is actually the problem. So I'm gonna drop this wire down behind here that's for. I don't like to see extra stuff. I don't see anything it could possibly connect to. It's interesting, it has an S485 connection, which is, that's typically industrial serial. All right, so now we need to get in here. Got one more connection. So the easy way to do this is just to hook under here like that. And then we're grounded. So at that point, we're essentially done with that. Now we've got to run the thermostat wire. So let me back you guys up. So I don't have a whole lot of it here, so I'm going to unwind all of it. And let me untangle it. That's funny. That's not mine. That is absolutely not mine. No idea where that came from. That is a treasure from the past. That was a brazing rod, by the way. In case you guys watching at home don't see that, that was brazing rod. So yeah, there's not gonna be a whole lot left here to play with. I wonder what this red and white wire does. It's only two conductor. Hmm. So this is gonna get strapped down there and then whatever's left will just get tied down over here and stay out of the way. Um, So first things first, let's pull out that phone picture. And set it right here where we can watch it. Let me bring you guys down closer.
So we used yellow, yellow, green, red, white, brown, orange. We did not use blue, so I'm going to take the blue and I'm going to just twist it around here so it's out of my way. But it's still there. I'm not going to cut it off. And then the rest of these need to be um, stripped. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It would have been nice if they had made these removable connectors. Uh, that is actually something Goodman did that, that was actually pretty smart. These are very, very inexpensive wire terminals. Why do I know that? Because in one of my businesses, Nanohawk, I play with electronics designs, and yes, these are the ones that I use. So, now I gotta get down here and put eyes on all this. Too big. I need a small screwdriver now, so let me go get that. All right, after a ridiculous hunt, I found it. So I know we need red and common. And I know we need green and yellow. And we need white. And I don't remember which one is going to, I mean, it's brown is going to be it, but let me see what colors we used. So red and orange. Yeah, my other flashlight is uh, about to give up the ghost, but we're almost done in here. So then green went to green. And then yellow went to yellow. White went to white. And let me go find a book and I'll change this. I gotta go look at the specs on which of these terminals. If it's, I think it's E-A-U-X, but I need to verify that. Okay, it is E-A-U-X, so that's the second terminal. Okay, so that's all good there. Let me move the camera back. So that gives me plenty of slack there, so that's where I'm gonna tighten it down.
there we go. So it still needs to be sealed. We're, we're by far not done, but we're done inside here. So next, let me sit on my stool. It'll be easier on my back and legs and knees. So we need to do a couple things here. We're gonna pull from the suction side. So we need to open these service ports. These aren't actually the service ports. These are the valves that would open the service ports. But then we need to open the service port here. And we're gonna bring this one tight. Let me go get my hoses and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my gauges here. Unfortunately, I don't have enough adapters so I can't just hook the vacuum pump straight to the suction side. I've got to go through my gauges. Um, the vacuum pump's gonna be down here. Actually, no, I don't. I, I just don't have the sizes. So this is how it's gonna go. And that's nice and tight. We'll do a vacuum pump test first. And uh, I'm gonna hook these up, so I'm gonna put this back on its little stand so you guys can see what I'm up to. Clearly, they're used to having these on a wall. That's nice and tight. So uh, let's do it to it. Off, 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 off. So the first thing we wanna do is bring 
that on. And this is fresh oil, so it shouldn't be a problem, but we wanna see that it pulls down to a nice hard vacuum fast. So we're between 500 and 250. We're at 250 at this point. And keep in mind, this is probably a 15 year old vacuum pump, so it's not the best, and, uh, but it'll do the job. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the big valve. That's just the air in the hose. And then we're gonna open up the system. And we're gonna start pulling a vacuum. So I'm gonna let that run for a few minutes and I'm gonna go use the restroom and I'll come back and I hope to see that it has pulled down some suction. If not, I got a problem I got to find. So unfortunately, there is a little holiday right there. So we're going to knock that out real quick. I've got my torch up here now, and I brought a fresh stick of silver solder. Ouch. The edges of this aluminum are sharp. Oh, and I really need... Let me go get a flashlight. I need better light. Okay, so we're ready to go. Guess we'll get more gas out of it if we turn it on. Although not a whole lot more because, yeah, we've about run through this. I'm just gobbing it on there because I want it to work. Okay. 
I'll give that just a little bit of time to cool off. And in the meanwhile, hopefully we're done. Pretty it is not. Done it is. Yeah, it's not hot up there, so. All right, looks pretty good. So let's go check outside and see if we've got that leak solved. All right. That sounds better. All right, so we're starting to pull a vacuum. So we're at 100,000 microns at this point. It'll take a while to pull a vacuum because this is there's a decent amount of tubing here. All right, we're approaching 10,000 microns, so we're at 10,000 microns. So I'm gonna let this run for a while while I clean up the other stuff. I'll be back out here with the camera in a, in a little while. So I wanted to give you guys a little update. We are at a 250 micron vacuum here. I don't know if you all can see that on the camera, so you might have to just trust me. It's one, two, three, four bars, and that's 2550, 100, 250. So that's pretty much a good vacuum, but I'm gonna let it run to pull any, uh, any moisture or anything else out of the system, because I know I sucked air into the system earlier. So I'm just gonna let it run and run and run for a little while while I do other things. Still chewing away at uh, 250 microns. I don't know if it's gonna get any lower than that, but we'll see. So one of the things I wanna do is turn on the indoor unit and I'm gonna power up the disconnect on the other side of the house. I've already made sure that it's off so the unit can't run, but the indoor unit can run, the fan will run. So I was a little scared because this is off, but then I remembered the breaker's off. So let's go turn the breaker on the unit on. I don't like this already. All right, it's on. So uh, thermostat's not coming on. Um, it may be that if the indoor unit can't see the outdoor unit, it won't power up. That's a distinct possibility. So let's see what's going on there. So about the only thing we can do is pull this cover to read the little indicator. Let's see what it says. Nothing. Well, I might end up having to take this off after all. It's fully powered up. That's weird. I wonder if I... Mm -hmm. I mean, it's completely acting like it doesn't have power. 
and I know it's got power. So anyway, I think we've got a perfect vacuum outside and inside, so I think we're ready to open it up anyway. So we're still drawing a 250 micron vacuum. That's about as good as I think this system's gonna get. Uh, now the trick is to disconnect it from the uh, unit without letting air in or refrigerant out. Okay, so what we're basically going to do is shut it off. So I'm going to shut off the valves to the unit. All right, so what I've done is I've left the gauge connected with, I've got this gauge connected through this hose. All right, so now I'm under a little bit of pressure and I can disconnect the system without a whole lot of danger. Now, figure out that and put this back on. Okay. So now we can go ahead and open this up. So open them all the way up and turn them just a fraction. And then I'm gonna seal them with these flare caps. And then I wanna check something on the inside real quick. I've never seen service valves on an air handler like this. So I wanna make sure that they really are open from the factory. They are, okay. That's what I would expect. Yep. Weird fitting. All right, let's go back outside. All right, so we need to go ahead and put this back together. That's cute, there's little plastic washers that come with this.
All right, so let's put up some stuff and I'll be back. All right, so moment of truth, let's... open this up and see if this unit comes to life. Let's go look upstairs. So still no thermostat, still no status LED. So we gotta take this cover off. Let me get my screwdriver because I ain't giving up tonight on this. I need a screwdriver. Let me go, I mean a flashlight. Let me go get a flashlight. All right, so let's try and figure out what's not happening. So we're going to start with, are we getting power? So let's just start with AC here and see if we're getting anything. Damn it. I don't have anything here. Huh, that's weird. Okay, let's go investigate. So, the only distinct possibility here is that I've still got power here, and I shouldn't. This is disconnected, or at least I thought it was. Uh. No, I have power here, so I have the wrong wires on that breaker. Well, that's a pretty easy thing to fix, so let's go fix that and see if that solves our conundrum. So we stick that in upside down, it powers it off. This breaker, this is supposed to be dead, and that's a stupid mistake. I should have checked this. So let's go fix it. All right, so my uh, wireless microphone has a dead battery at this point. This will not take long. And I should have checked this, so I'm kind of annoyed at myself over it, but whatever.
put a piece of black tape around this, but you know what? I'm not going to because I'm the only one that works on this and I know how I wire shit. That would not take long. Let's see what's going on. So, for safety reasons, I have the disconnect pulled. Uh, let me go get my screwdriver that goes with this. sparks. I see lights. Let's go see if we have a thermostat. Hey, I have a thermostat. I guess you guys can't read that. But now you can. So we're in business. Let's go button it up. So I have turned off the power to it while I replace the cover. access cover. Okay, so we're ready to power it back up. We'll put the disconnect back in, we'll put the cover back on the disconnect. All right. And then let's go play with the thermostat and see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna turn the fan on. I heard the click here. And let's go see if it came on upstairs. So far, nothing. Let's go look at the thermostat again. So I've got the fan on and I've tried different modes. It's still, I don't, I don't think the system's talking to it. So I gotta check into that. So no rest for the wicked. It's still not coming on. 
So let's check the errors first. And we gotta move one of the thermostat wires anyway, so this has gotta come out. Seventy-six. So let's see what seventy-six says. check the dip switches because I actually think that's probably where the issue is um, but I the this has got a weird way of dealing in fact I, I don't trust it so there it's powered down so it uses Y2 uh, Y and Y2 in a single zone system which is what we're running this as we're actually running as a single zone communicating system between the indoor and outdoor. So let's see if that solves our problem. I don't think it will. got 240 volts or we wouldn't have 24 volts out of the system. One, two, three, four, and need to be off. And they are. And switch one needs to be on. Switch three. Can't read any of that. All right, 
let's see if that did anything. I can't imagine that that would have made any kind of a difference. Seventy-five. I think that's the temperature. Well, there it goes. It just fired right up, running the fan. So, I guess it could tell that Y2 wasn't connected. Well, that's pretty impressive, if it's not irritating. Let's button it up and see what it can do. There goes our fan, so let's go see it. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna turn the air conditioner on just briefly. And let's go see it outside. So there it goes. It does have a couple minute delay, but gosh, this thing is silent. And it moves a lot of air. I'm looking forward to having a really, really efficient unit. Yep, I have a temperature difference between the two. That's what I should have. And it's almost silent. I think this is gonna work a lot better than the unit that was here. If nothing else, it'll be a hell of a lot easier to work on it if I ever have to. inside. So it's blowing lots of nice cold air out and um, the problem is we don't have condensate hooked up and oh yeah that's ice cold so and that's not insulated and it's not insulated outside so it's going to cause condensation to be a mess all over the place. That's nice and warm. This thing's coming down to a nice chilly temperature. Yeah, I don't know what the discharge temperature is yet, but it'll very quickly cool this space off. I got some thermostat gremlins I gotta work out. Uh, the thermostat says waiting for equipment, so I gotta call. I gotta call and get some support on this tomorrow and figure out what, what I've done wrong. Um, it might be more wiring gremlins. But in the meanwhile, I actually have an air conditioning unit in my house now, and it's really quiet outside. So before I shut it down, I'm going to take you guys downstairs and let you hear it one more time. So at this point, it's running pretty much at full throttle. And it's quiet. That's ice cold. Which is what we want. We want cold coming back to the compressor. That's what keeps it alive. So at this point, we're good to go. I'm going to shut it off with the thermostat and keep running the window unit and the mini split uh, until I get the ductwork finished. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.